Hosanna to the son of David, the king of Israel. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And also with you. So it's lovely to welcome you here this morning for our Palm Sunday service. I will be leading the service along with my colleague Claire, our lay minister. And we welcome all of you from who are watching us online as well. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, during Lent, we have been preparing by works of love and sacrifice for the celebration of our Lord's death and resurrection. Today we come together to begin the solemn celebration in unison with the church throughout the world as Christ enters the city to complete his work as our far saviour to suffer and to die and to rise again. So let's go with him in faith and love so that, a united, so that united with him in his sufferings we may share his risen life. And I invite you all to hold up your palm crosses. God our Saviour, whose Son Jesus Christ entered Jerusalem as Messiah to suffer and to die. Let these palms be for us signs of his victory and grant that we who bear them in his name may ever hail him as our King and follow him in the, in the way that leads to eternal life, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We now have our first of our Gospel readings, which Marjorie is going to bring for us. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Luke 19, beginning at verse 28. After telling this story, Jesus went on toward Jerusalem, walking ahead of his disciples. As he came to the towns of Bethpage and Bethany on the Mount of Olives, he sent two disciples ahead. Go into that village over there, he told them, and as you enter it, you will see a young donkey tied there that no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks, why are you untying that colt? Just say, the Lord needs it. So they went and found the colt, just as Jesus had said. And sure enough, as they were untying it, the owners asked them, why are you untying that colt? And the disciples simply replied, the Lord needs it. So they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their garments over it for him to ride on. As he rode along, the crowd spread out their garments on the road ahead of him. When he reached the place where the road started down the Mount of Olives, all of his followers began to shout and sing as they walked along praising God for all the wonderful miracles they had seen. Blessings on the King who comes in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in highest heaven. But some of the Pharisees among the crowd said, Teacher, rebuke your followers for saying things like that. He replied, If they kept quiet, the stones along the road would burst into cheers. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Thank you, 
you, Marjorie. We continue now in song and a traditional hymn that is often sung on Palm Sunday, Ride On, Ride On in Majesty. If you're using the um, hymn books, it's number 583. So I invite you to stand if you would like to. to be seated for our special prayer for today, the Collect. <clears throat> we say together, True and humble King, hailed by the crowd as Messiah, grant us the faith to know you and love you, that we may be found beside you on the way to the cross, which is the path of glory. Amen. And we continue with our New Testament reading from Philippians. Our reading is taken Philippians chapter 2 verses 5 to 11. You must have the same attitude that Christ Jesus had. Though he was God, he did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges. He took the humble position of a slave and was born as a human being. When he appeared in human form, he humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on a cross. Therefore, God elevated him to the place of highest honour and gave him the name above all other names, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue declare that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, John. 
They sing again now, From heaven you came, helpless babe, and words beyond the screen, please stand. of the temple guard 
to discuss the best way to betray Jesus to them. They were delighted and they promised to give him money. So he agreed and began looking for an opportunity to betray Jesus so that they could arrest him when the crowds weren't around. Now the festival of unleavened bread arrived when the Passover lamb is sacrificed. Jesus sent Peter and John ahead and said, Go and prepare the Passover meal so that we can eat together. Where do you want us to prepare it? The disciples asked. Jesus replied, As soon as you enter Jerusalem, a man carrying a pitcher of water will meet you. Follow him. At the house he enters, say to the owner, The teacher asks, Where is the guest room where I can eat the Passover meal with my disciples? He will take you upstairs to a large room that is already set up. That is where you should prepare our meal. They went off to the city and found everything just as Jesus had said, and they prepared the Passover meal there. When the time came, Jesus and the apostles sat down together at the table. Jesus said, I've been very eager to eat this Passover meal with you before my suffering begins. For I tell you now that I won't eat a meal again until its meaning is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took a cup of wine and gave thanks to God for it. Then he said, Take it this and share it among yourselves. For I will not drink wine again until the kingdom of God has come. He took some bread and gave thanks to God for it. Then he broke it in pieces and gave it to the disciples, saying, This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took another cup of wine and said, This cup is the new covenant between God and his people. An agreement confirmed with my blood, which is poured out as a sacrifice for you. But here, at this table, sitting among us as a friend, is the man who will betray me. For it has been determined that the Son of Man must die. For what sorrow awaits the one who betrays him? Disciples began to ask each other which of them would ever do such a thing. Then they began to argue among themselves about who would be the greatest among them. Jesus told them, In this world the kings and great lords, great men lord it over their people, yet they are called friends of the people. But among you it will be different. Those of you who are the greatest among you should take the lowest rank, and the leader should be like his servant. Who is more important? The one who sits at the table, or the one who serves? The one who sits at the table, of course, but not here, for I am among you as one who serves. You have stayed with me in my time of trial, and just as my Father has granted me a kingdom, I now grant you the right to eat and drink at my table in my kingdom. And you will sit on thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Simon, Simon, Satan has asked me to sift you like a wheat. But I have pleaded for you in prayer, Simon, that your faith should not fail. So when you have repented and turned against, again to me, strengthen your brothers. Peter said, Lord, I'm ready to go to prison with you and even die with you. But Jesus said, Peter, let me tell you something. Before the rooster crows tomorrow morning, you will deny me three times that you even know me. Then Jesus asked to the disciples, When I sent you out to preach the good news, and you did not have money, a traveller's bag, or an extra pair of sandals, did you need anything? No, they replied. Then Jesus said to them, But now take your money and a traveller's bag, and if you don't have a sword, sell your cloak and buy one. For the time has come for the prophecy about me to be fulfilled. 
He was counted among the rebels. Yes, everything written about me by the prophets will come true. Look, Lord, we, we have two swords among us. That's enough, he said. Then accompanied by the disciples, Jesus left the upstairs room and went as usual to the Mount of Olives. There he told them, Pray that you will not give in to temptation. He walked away, about a stone's throw, and knelt down and prayed. Father, if you are willing, please take this cup of suffering away from me. Yet I want your will to be done, not mine. Then an angel from heaven appeared and strengthened him. He prayed more fervently, and he was in such agony of spirit that his sweat fell to the ground like great drops of blood. At last he stood up again and returned to the disciples, only to find them asleep, exhausted from grief. He asked them, Why are you sleeping? Get up and pray so that you will not give in to temptation. But even as Jesus said this, a crowd approached, led by Judas, one of the twelve disciples. Judas walked over to Jesus to greet him with a kiss. But Jesus said, Judas, would you betray the Son of Man with a kiss? When the other disciples saw what was about to happen, they exclaimed, Lord, should we fight? We brought the sword. And one of them struck at the high priest's slave, slashing off his right ear. But Jesus said, No more of this. And he touched the man's ear and healed him. Then Jesus spoke to the leading priests, the captains of the temple guard, and the elders who had come for him. Am I some dangerous revolutionary that you come with swords and clubs to arrest me? Why didn't you arrest me in the temple? I was there every day. But this is your moment, the time when the power of darkness reigns. So they arrested him and led him to the high priest's home. And Peter followed at a distance. The guards lit a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat around it. And Peter joined them there. A servant girl noticed him in the firelight and began staring at him. Finally, she said, This man was one of Jesus' followers. But Peter denied it. Woman, I don't even know him. After a while, someone else looked at him and said, You must be one of them. No, man, I'm not. Peter retorted. About an hour later, someone else insisted, This must be one of them, because he's a Galilean too. But Peter said, Man, I don't even know what you're talking about. And immediately, while he was still speaking, the rooster crowed. At that moment, the Lord turned and looked at Peter. Suddenly, the Lord's words flashed through Peter's mind. Before the rooster crows tomorrow morning, you will deny three times that you even know me. And Peter left the courtyard, weeping bitterly. The guards in charge of Jesus began mocking and beating him. They blindfolded him and said, Prophesy to us, who hit you that time? And they hurled all sorts of terrible insults at him. At daybreak, all the elders of the people assembled, including the leading priests and the teachers of religious law. Jesus was led before this high council and they said, Tell, Tell us, are you the Messiah? But Jesus replied, If I tell you, you won't believe me. And if I ask you a question, you won't answer. But from now on, the Son of Man will be seated in a place of power at God's right hand. They all shouted, So you are claiming to be the Son of God. And he replied, You say that I am. They said, Why do we need other witnesses? 
We ourselves have been saved. Then the entire council took Jesus to Pilate, the Roman governor. They began to state their case. This man has been leading our people astray by telling them not to pay their taxes to the Roman government and by claiming he is the Messiah, a king. So Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus replied, You have said it. Pilate turned to the leading priests and to the crowd and said, I can find nothing wrong with this man. Then they became insistent. But he is causing riots by teaching wherever he goes, all over Judea, from Galilee to Jerusalem. Oh, is he a Galilean? Pilate asked. When they said that he was, Pilate sent him to Herod Antipas, because Galilee was under Herod's jurisdiction, and Herod happened to be in Jerusalem at the time. Herod was delighted at the opportunity to see Jesus, because he'd heard about him and had been hoping for a long time to see him perform a miracle. He asked Jesus question after question, but Jesus refused to answer. <coughs> Meanwhile, the leading priests and the teachers of religious law stood there shouting their accusations. Then Herod and his soldiers began mocking and ridiculing Jesus. Finally, they put a royal robe on him and sent him back to Pilate. Herod and Pilate, who had been enemies before, became friends that day. Then Pilate called together the leading priests and other religious leaders along with the people, and he announced, his verdict. You brought this man to me, accusing him of leading a revolt. I have examined him thoroughly on this point in your presence, and I find him innocent. <coughs> Herod came to the same conclusion and sent him back to us. Nothing this man has done calls for the death penalty, so I'll have him flogged and then I'll release him. Then a mighty roar rose from the crowd, and with one voice they shouted, Kill him, and release Barabbas to us. Barabbas was in prison for taking part in an insurrection in Jerusalem against the government, and for murder. Pilate argued with them because he wanted to release Jesus, but they kept shouting, Crucify him! Crucify him! For the third time he demanded, Why? What crime has he committed? I found no reason to send him to death. So, I'll have him flogged and then I'm going to release him. <clears throat> but the mob shouted louder and louder, demanding that Jesus be crucified and their voices prevailed. So Pilate, sentenced Jesus to die, as they demanded. As he, they had requested, he released it Barabbas, the man in prison, for insurrection and murder. But he turned Jesus over to them to do as they wished. As they led Jesus away, a man named Simon, who was from Cyrene, happened to be coming in from the countryside. The soldiers seized him and put the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. A large crowd trailed behind, including many grief-stricken women. But Jesus turned and said to them, Daughters of Jerusalem, don't weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For the days are coming when they will say, Fortunate indeed are the women who were childless, the wombs that have not borne a child, and the breasts that have never nursed. People will beg the mountains, fall on us, and plead with the hills, bury us. For if these things are done when the tree is green, what will happen when it is dry? Two others. Both criminals were led out to be executed with him. When they came to a place called the Skull, they nailed him to the cross. 
and the criminals were also crucified, one on his right and one on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they are doing. And the soldiers gambled for his clothes by throwing dice. The crowd watched, and the leaders scoffed. He saved others, let him save himself. And if he is really God's Messiah, the Chosen One. The soldiers mocked him too by offering him a drink of sour wine. They called out to him. If you are the King of the Jews, save yourself. A sign was fastened above him with these words. This is the King of the Jews. One of the criminals hanging beside him scoffed. So you're the Messiah, are you? Prove it by saving yourself and us too while you're at it. But the other criminal protested. Don't you fear God even when you have been sentenced to die? We deserve to die for our crimes, but this man hasn't done anything wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus replied, I assure you, today you will be with me in paradise. By this time it was about noon, and darkness fell across the whole land until three o'clock. The light from the sun was gone, and suddenly the curtain in the sanctuary of the temple was torn down the middle. Then Jesus shouted, Father, I entrust my spirit into your hands. And with those words, he breathed his last. When the Roman officer overseeing the execution saw what had happened, he worshipped God and said, Surely this man was innocent. And when all the crowd that came to see the crucifixion saw what had happened, they went home in deep sorrow. But Jesus' friends, including the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance watching. Now, there was a good and righteous man named Joseph. He was a member of the Jewish High Council, but he had not agreed with the decision and the actions of the other religious leaders. He was from the town of Arimathea in Judea, and he was waiting for the kingdom of God to come. He went to Pilate and asked for Jesus' body. Then he took the body down from the cross and wrapped it in a long sheet of linen cloth and laid it in a new tomb that had been carved out of rock. This was done late on Friday afternoon, the day of preparation, as the Sabbath was about to begin. As his body was taken away, the women from Galilee followed and saw the tomb where his body was placed. Then they went home and prepared spices and ointments to anoint his body. But by the time they were finished, the Sabbath had begun, so they rested as required by the law. This is the passion of the Lord.
I'm sure for most of us, one of the most poignant points in our two gospel readings is how quickly the crowd who were shouting Hosanna as Jesus entered Jerusalem were persuaded to shout only a few days later, crucify him, crucify him. I'm sure most of us are happy to be associated with those who shout Hosanna. But are we willing to recognise ourselves among those who called for the death of Jesus? And yet, that is who we are. We're all responsible for Jesus' death on the cross. For he took our place. He took the place of all of us. For it was for our sins that he hung and suffered there. Jesus, the one true innocent Lamb of God, died for me. He died for you. And I can only think of one response as I humbly give thanks to God for this most gracious gift. So I will kneel before him to say sorry for my sins that pierced him and impaled him on the cross to die. You may wish to join me. The response uh, to the words, let us pray to the Lord, is, Lord, have mercy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Let us keep silence for a few moments as we invite the Spirit to speak into our hearts. For forgiveness for the many times we have denied Jesus, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For grace to seek out those habits of sin which mean spiritual death. And by prayer, and self-discipline to overcome them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. <clears throat> For Christian people, 
that through the suffering of disunity, there may grow a rich union in Christ. <clears throat> Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For world leaders, as they seek peace in the Ukraine and elsewhere, and for those who make laws, interpret them and administer them, that our common life may be ordered in justice and mercy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who still make Jerusalem a battleground, for Israelis and Palestinians, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who have the courage and the honesty to work openly for justice and peace, and especially in those in countries such as Russia and China where such activities are persecuted, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those in the darkness and agony of isolation, that they may find support and encouragement. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who weighed down with hardship, failure or sorrow, feel that God is far from them and are tempted to give up the way of the cross. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who mourn, thinking especially today of the families of Mary and McConnell, Alex Nelson, Tessa Harding and Jean Beach. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we, with those who have died in faith, may find mercy in the day of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Holy God, Holy and strong, holy and immortal, have mercy upon us. Amen. Amen. to share the peace with one another. And with our um, brothers and sisters online too. Once we are far off, but now in union with Christ Jesus, we have been brought near through the shedding of Christ's blood, for he is our peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Remain <laughs> standing for our next hymn, which is Meekness and Majesty.
Gracious God, accept these gifts and use them, uh, and with them our lives, to be used in your service. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. I invite you to sit or kneel as you feel appropriate. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise. Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And now we give you thanks because us, for our sins, he was lifted high upon the cross that we might draw the whole world to himself and by his suffering and death became, become the source of eternal salvation for all who put their trust in him. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and singing. his body and his blood. Who on the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body which was given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom. With this bread and this cup, we make a memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. of thanks and praise as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty. Renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. 
through him and with him and in the unity of the Holy Spirit and with all who stand before you in heaven and on earth. We worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. We continue with our prayer of spiritual communion, especially for those unable to take communion today, but we can all say these words together. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, for all the benefits you have given me, for all the pains and insults you have borne for me. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart. O most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother, may I know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day. Amen. And we continue with our post-communion prayer for today. Lord Jesus Christ, you humbled yourself in taking the form of a servant and in obedience died on the cross for our salvation. Give us the mind to follow you and to proclaim you as Lord and King to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Faithful God, may we who share this banquet glory in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ our salvation, life and hope, who reigns as Lord now and forever. Amen. Amen. And I invite you to stand for our final hymn, My Song is Love Unknown.
include our service. I'll specify switch on properly. With some notices. Please be aware there is lots going on this week. It is Holy Week. There will be Compline here. Yes, please sit down. I should have said that straight away. There will be Compline here at 6.30pm on Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday. On Monday, Thursday, those of you who wish are invited to join the clergy and lay ministers at the cathedral for 11 o'clock for the chrism service. And here in St Michael's we will be have our Maundy Thursday communion at 7.30. On Friday, Good Friday, will be the meditation of the last hour between two and three. And for all those young at heart, and I don't care what age that makes you, those of you young at heart, we'll be celebrating Easter with an Easter-themed tea at the tin, only at 10.30 on Saturday morning. So. We, never quite, we haven't quite worked out what to call it. Easter of the tin, I think. And then for early birds, some, um, Easter Day, there will be a dawn service at St Mary Magdalene, the tin church, followed by all age Easter communions at St George's at 9.15 and here at 10.30. Anything else, please look in your newsletter. It's what it's for. If you don't have a copy and you're here, please check at the back. If you're online and you don't have a copy, please email us and we'll get a copy to you. But we have one... Oh, I have one other notice to do. Where's the band book? <laughs> you got buried. May I publish the bands of marriage between James Matthew Twyford and Hannah Rebecca Hall, both of this parish, and these are for the second time of asking. If any of you know any cause or just impediment why these two persons should not be joined in holy matrimony, you should declare it now. So let's just pray for James and for Hannah. Father, we ask you to bless James and Hannah as they prepare for their marriage. Watch over them and keep them safe. And may they, be, they come together in union with you in joyfulness. Amen. Amen. But we're celebrating more than one marriage today. Come on, John and Anne. You didn't think you were going to get away with it, did you? <laughs> But today we are celebrating a very special marriage, 40 years of marriage for John and Anne. And we're delighted that we can celebrate with you. Well, we're delighted to be able to, to be here and actually it's been wonderful because we moved the Semington service because their APCM has uh, moved a couple of weeks. Uh, it's lovely to actually celebrate being able to sit next to my wife. It doesn't happen very often. <laughs> So, I normally sit on my own. I've got my sister, my brother-in-law, my husband in my pew hmm. today. So. <laughs> yes. so we want to celebrate with you, so we have a couple of uh, a few gifts and things for you. Oh, wow. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. For all the love and care you've shown us, not just at this time, but throughout the years we've been here, and uh, it really is appreciated. So thank you very much indeed. And the, uh, there is some for those who are able to uh, eat it. There's uh, coffee and uh, cake at the back after the service. Well, drink the coffee actually. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but thank you very much indeed. So you have that back, Joe. My, my sister is here. Was my bridesmaid. <laughs> thank you very so much. Yeah, so can we just pray for you? That would be lovely, thank you. Father of all, we give you thanks for this marriage, for the blessing it has been to John and to Anne and to all the family, and the blessing they are to us now. We ask that you continue to watch over them and keep them safe in the years ahead. Amen. 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 Thank you. Much appreciated. Thank you. <laughs> and 
So we come to a final prayer of blessing for us all. Christ give you the grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourself, take up your cross and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you today and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. This is our God.